Meet Mr. Alvai Johari. He is the design authority at ICICI Bank. Welcome, Mr. Johari. Uh, my next panelist is uh, Mr. Topendra Bhattacharji, head of digital banking at RBL Bank. Mr. Bhattacharji, welcome for this discussion. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anu. Uh, my next speaker is uh, Mr. Shadab Mahmood, Head of Technology and Development at J Jammu and Kashmir Bank. Welcome, Mr. Mahmood. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Well, uh, my my uh, next speaker is Mr. Srinivas Iyer, uh, Senior Vice President, Digital Banking at Axis Bank. Welcome, Mr. Iyer, to this discussion. Thanks, Anup, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Glad to have you all here in this discussion today, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll uh, straightforward go and start the discussion uh, with the uh, topic of today's. So, uh, may I may I start with uh, Mr. Johore uh, to start this uh, discussion on this on his viewpoint on this topic? How digital experience is driving transformation in uh, driving this transformation uh, banking from yeah. from his uh, yeah. bank point of view, right. Mr. Johore? Yeah. Over to you. Thanks. Thank, thanks, Anup. So I think I think before we just dive into the how, I think I think it's very important to just rigorously uh, define and specify the what. You know, so when we are set out to improve something, it's it behooves on all of us to just very very rigorously define it. And the and the way we look upon it is actually three things. Yeah, uh, any good experience should be easy. You know, which means that whatever you set out to do, uh, you know, you should not have to apply too much of brains to you know, do that well. Yeah. The second one is that it should be effective. You know, you set out to do something. If that something does not get done well, uh, you know, it's a bad experience. And the third thing is when you've done the experience, you should actually have a very good, decent feeling about, uh, you know, the, the overall experience, about the utility that provided that experience. So there is emotion. Yeah. So good experience is something that is easy, that is effective and results in a in a positive emotion yeah so so that is really the the what of what a good experience is uh the tricky part is the how you know i mean most of us uh you know are are large universal banks and uh you know <clears throat> to give a good experience which is easy and effective and emotional uh you know takes a lot of engineering at the back end to make sure that that experience is delivered so you know the way to look upon it is actually split the entire infrastructure, you know, people, process, products, you know, into various systems. Yeah. I mean, you know, call them platforms, call them systems. You know, so obviously there are systems of engagement, you know, there's systems of intelligence and there's systems of record keeping. In the past, you know, most of the experience was dictated by the systems of record keeping. So it was more important for the bank to account for it well than to really take care of the customers. What's happened over the last, you know, 10, 15 years and accelerating over the last two, three years is really the systems of engagement. There is a lot of technology that is brought to bear to make sure that, uh, you know, whatever the customers have set out to do is contextual, it's hyper personalized, you know. Uh, so, so there's been a lot of effort in that direction, you know. How do you get the systems of engagement and the system of intelligence? You know, it, you've got to be mindful of the context. You know, all of us broadcast a lot of signals whenever we engage with a digital channel, the point is to tune on to the signals and then do what is contextually authentic. Yeah. So that's that's what we are up to. Sure. Very, very interesting aspect. Of this one. Okay. So uh, may I invite Mr. Srinivas Iyer uh, to, to share your perspective on this particular topic? Sure. Thanks, Anu. So, uh, so as everyone is aware, right, the world of banking today is fairly commoditized. Uh, one thing that is going to uh, sort of redefine and shape the future of banking is enriched uh, customer experience. So experimental banking with you know, customer experience at the core is going to be the future of banking. Uh, banks uh, that help customers in sort of taking wiser money management decisions and help them create wealth will excel in the future. Also, new age technologies you know, are going to become enablers for this and platforms over which such experiences are, right, are going to get created uh, that will be the key. And uh, so as they say, you know, basically good products can get customers for the brands, but essentially great customer experience will get you brand ambassadors, right? So uh, so going forward, you know, uh, 
what we believe is that you know uh, digital identity will form the backbone of the digital world and advancements in biometrics blockchain conversational ai all these things are going to play an extremely important role in ensuring safety security of digital transactions yeah great so uh, let me let me move to mr mahmoob so let us hear from mr mahmoob your perspective on this one yeah thank you mr anup uh, see banks traditionally have been the forerunners of digitization uh, over the years and we have although we have legacy systems in place but the digitization has been uh, only where the banks it is an uh, although the business, business transformation is an overarching theme for banks but digital strategy and business of digital transformation is still part of that overarching business strategy so as uh, other panelists have said i would reiterate this yes, we have to reinvent the customer experience as a primary focus of digital transformation customer experience and personalization of customer services drives the digital transformation personalized services it is no longer you can't segment customers you have to have a pick customers individually you have to give them individual experience you have to identify their need individually it is no, no longer a customer segmentation uh, journey it is a customer orientation journey the specific customer has to this that's why personalization of services is very important then as uh, to give out there has to be a modernization of technology uh, help you uh, and that transformation journey it, it should have this uh, technology and solutions and systems in place so that you can leverage your strategy or your uh, fundamental then it, it's very important in our case that we have an operating model where your speed and uh, convenience are at the forefront of customers then you also have to have an offline on digital experience for customers in case where they require human touch they require an advice they require a dispute resolution or they require somebody to listen to them so uh, all these things and and to focus on the, uh, on all this data using of data use uh, uh, how you analyze data that's very important because that is how you drive so i would say to what centricity and personalization of services what drives transformation in bank of today thanks mr mabu uh, your voice was breaking in between but we'll come and come back on the discussion there so uh, different perspective thank you uh, let me come to mr topendra bhattacharya ji uh, please please share your view point on on this topic from your end thank you thank you anu uh, I think my esteemed colleagues in the panel have covered uh, most of it, and I think uh, Mr. Abey has very beautifully articulated it. Uh, the entire space. Uh, one item which I would want to actually add to uh, Abey mentioned about is building trust in the tech space. So, uh, just to build on what he mentioned about the tips and how the experience. One very important part of digital banking is building trust. and uh, that is uh, something which actually in yester years would come on the way of uh, you know providing a beautiful customer experience to the, to, to to a digital transaction now given the evolution through various uh, the new tools that he was mentioned in terms of digital identity and also other invisible uh, non contemporary variables that are there which which are emerging so you know managing this entire trust factor in, in performing a digital transaction will go a long way in evolving various digital experiences and the channels that are available today to customers slowly and steadily we are seeing that space evolving very well and adding much much rapidly to the overall uh, transaction uh, behavior of customers with covid of course we have seen an impetus in terms of you know growing volumes and 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 uh, number of transactions and, and also avenues through which customers are coming to banks now the traditional channels have got battered badly in terms of branch banking has is something is i would say to go away but given the scenario today and the current day uh, environment it is limited and therefore uh, creating the experience within the comfort of indoors for a customer and also providing the same 
uh, uh, kind of security to those transactions is something which is critical, and I think that is something which is which is evolving very fast. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I'll just quickly go back to Mr. Johore. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Bhattacharjee has added another uh, uh, parameter to your observation. So, would you like comment on that? <laughs> no, no, it's uh, you know, it, it's it's absolutely right, and especially you know, in a in a service such as ours, uh, you know, there is a lot of fiduciary responsibility that we have. Uh, you know, and therefore, trust is is absolutely essential. You know, but trust alone does not elevate it. I mean, you know, so a part of the emotion is trust, and a part of the emotion is also, uh, you know, aesthetic polish. Uh, you know, part of the emotion also is that you know they've solved my problem. You know, all of that, and you know, if you if you do that repeatedly, uh, you know, that results in in actually trust uh, building up. So you know, so the, the way to look upon experiences, look upon it in three dimensions. You know, the first one is really interactions. You know. what is my balance my credit card is lost you know that kind of stuff that goes on to a journey saying you know that i am a credit card customer and these are the 15 things i do and that in turn builds on to a relationship so what happens is trust does not accrue at a interaction level in fact it does not even accrue at a journey level it accrues at a higher level which is relationship now while the end output is at a higher level it's build up of several interactions you know so that's another piece of uh, bad news or good news depending on how you look at it is that you know you can have 15 good interactions and one bad interaction and you lose trust yeah because that goes on to that the journey is defective and defective journeys don't make for a very good relationship yeah so therefore it you know it, it builds upon itself uh, you know the the key thing is how do you do it you know i think most of the theory of what a good experience constitutes is now pretty much understood by all the the point is really can we really go out and deliver it uh, and let me be provocative here is you know and i think amongst banks we we'll, we can largely benchmark to ourselves and pat ourselves saying we are doing a fabulous job uh you know if an apple or a google or a facebook were to come to, to you know tomorrow and actually get a banking license and i'm just being hypothetically here you know the kind of experience that they would bring on uh you know would be would be dimensionally uh different from what we currently uh, you know uh, so and that calls for you know a lot of thinking and doing at our end uh you know and obviously thinking preceded you know before doing and not a substitute for doing you know otherwise we <laughs> we keep debating about hypothetical situations yep the, the the other the other dimension you know and it's to do not just with trust with all the other three dimensions of ease and effectiveness also is to measure it you know you can plan you can execute uh, but you never know as to how it is being received by the end customer yeah so therefore you know in the good old times we used to do surveys and we used to calculate nps scores most of the stuff is not as uh, proactive it's it's very reactive and sometimes downright incorrect uh, you know a, a better thing for us to do these days is actually track the journeys on the browser or the app or the contact center in the branch and actually get a sense of are the customers getting what they wanted to you know set out to do you know and 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 depending on the context not everyone wants to buy that insurance right uh, you know people want to learn people want to do people want to uh, you know just just go to a branch uh, you know and people want to you know buy some stuff so yeah. each one of them is actually a micro moment now how do we manage these micro moments how do we plan it out is uh, you know a lot of detailed thinking and of course a lot of execution around it okay yeah i agree and then ultimately we are talking of experience somehow <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know it's, it's it's this mythical thing you know experience has to be earned you know yeah, and, and exactly. the, the way it gets done is actually interactions at the bottom and journeys and then a relationship yeah yeah okay let let me take that same thing little little bit uh, more into detail really let me uh, come to mr bhattacharya now so what is the strategy in terms of enhancing the digital experience of the of your banking customers so uh, i think then then we can go to, go to the rest of the questions i guess yeah uh, sure so i think uh, again i mean i'm sorry i'm leaning on what uh, has mentioned on and i think that it's been very very difficult once again uh, 
So you're right. I mean, uh, uh, I am building this around the experience, and uh, the point of you know having these micro interactions with with a particular level of affection, or you know, improving them at that level, is actually what evolves into a good relationship with the customer. And as and how you move forward. is where you, uh, you actually create the overall relationship at a bank level or a, or an institutional level so if you look at it and let me give you an analogy of it, what we have uh, in the bank today so so we have a business that we run is uh, acquiring customers online okay now uh, let me try and build this so given our experience Uh, in the last say we've been running it almost for about 4 4 plus years now the pretty acquired this customer it the customer comes in at a particular balance and i'm talking about the basics it's about being so uh, delivered to the customer he is typically experiencing a journey which is an online journey much predefined because of the way in which the regulation has been fit in and that is all that he gets at that point of time so yes we can improve that it is a little limited once the customer is on board and the value the relationship value at that point of time is x the moment i start interacting with the customer so the regulation defines something called ipv which is in person verification of a customer now this ipv yes it is it is given as a regulation but having said that it is also the first human interaction of the customer with the bank Okay. okay the moment that intervention comes in we see a huge jump in relationship back okay now that is step 1 step 2 then we have some where we call on these customers and interact with them at a at a at a one on one level given that there is some kind of relationship management being done with this customer we see another 10x in terms of the raise in terms of the value what i'm trying to say is that india is a very dfm kind of customer case where do it for me is what it is so in that scenario you need that hybrid scenario where you have digital in one format which reaches the experience to a particular level and then you augment it with a bit of you know human interaction keeping all the other constraints in place in terms of you know scaling up in terms of infrastructure in terms of cost etc etc keeping these in perspective we see a scenario where the value bit only when it is a hybrid scenario and that is that is what i think builds up on these experiences so i actually second what abhay said and and you know it is this interaction which keeps building up a relationship with the institution thank you yeah. so uh, mr mehboob let me ask you this one uh, would you like to comment on this uh, hybrid experience where we are talking of digital plus a, 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 a human interface yeah i i would say this is this is very really striking to me on the head in these times because uh, we uh, uh, you have customer experience as a journey and when uh, as uh, mr srinivas said that when you acquire more customers that is once that's the first touch point with the bank but then to build upon that and you know, from the retail perspective you can only you know, give them some services but there are more uh, services which would require a human and which would require a face to face meetings with the customers so that's why the original experience and the human experience they have to be balanced in a way wherein the journey of the customer and he feels valued It's not just he; he is a touch point for the for the bank. But then his hybrid model has to work in the human touch. We can't, we can't, we can't digitize just just like treating them as robots. You can't do that. We have to treat them as human. They are of course, and we have give human feeding. Maybe as digitization, onboarding people would just look at the first step. But then to further the journey and keep it sustainable. to give uh, there are solutions there are, there are there are instances or experiences wherein the customer would require to require a human human sitting on the other side so it, the balance has to be maintained without compromise quality and the trust of the institution thanks thanks mr mehboob 
let me come to Mr. Srinivas Iyer. Let me exp- extend the discussion a little bit here. So let me ask you this manner. So about this transformation per se, the extending experience to transformation here. So would you like to speak about the key challenges, uh, the journey, when did it start, the benefits, the roadmap ahead, maybe maybe three years down the line from, from, the, from your bank's perspective? Sure. Uh, so essentially, you know, the, uh, the digital journey for access began almost a decade ago, right? And uh, so a number of uh, you know, measures were you know, implemented at that point in time, starting off with uh, self-service kiosks, other based you know, customer service and automation, all aimed at increasing the momentum of the digital transformation journey. Uh, the bank, you know, uh, over the last 10 years, was started off by installing digital self-service kiosks, which you know, it was christened as speed banking services, you know, with over 2,000 branches you know, having them in addition uh, to the deployment of at least about 30,000 biometric readers across its network to adhere to the EKYC norms you know, and the new account signups and the other uh, other base services. So the idea was to drive uh, digital at scale. So while a lot of conversations in digital is you know aimed around uh, mobile apps and the front end, right? Access has always focused on also what goes behind the scenes, right? For instance, you know, uh, Access has provided uh, tablets to all its uh, customer service officers. Uh, and uh, you know, today, as we speak, we have at least about uh, 60,000 customer officers who are using tablets to not only sort of acquire customers, but also to basically you know, uh, service them. Uh, 85% of the current and savings account are now open through tablet and nearly uh, 75% of all, all our transactions are on an instant gratification mode. Wherein you know uh, either you know the services can be done at the branches using biometric or via one-time password received on the mobile. So uh, the entire process, you know, what we did was we took a you know we split it into four phases. Uh, the first phase was looking at the process redesign, what to centralize, you know, what to keep in the branches, uh, and getting the entire organization alignment done, right? So when you do a digital transformation, uh, you know, uh, there is a, a significant amount of change management that is required and the entire organization needs to be uh, realigned to this entire agenda. Uh, the second phase was about uh, you know, lean and process uh, re-engineering, including uh, robotic process automation, RPA. And the focus was to get it right the first time. Uh, the third and the fourth phases uh, no, involved uh, g- digitization at scale and the use of new age tools like RPA, machine learning, artificial in- intelligence, conversational AI and all those kind of things. And because of this, you know, essentially uh, all these things have got accelerated over the last three years, especially in the last two years and uh, no, with the COVID pandemic setting in, this has got accelerated further. And uh, thanks to that, you know, so today, because of this relentless focus on making access digital. Uh, so last year we had, you know, in our D2C channel, which is essentially, uh, you know, uh, digital to customer, uh, 74% of all our customers are digitally active, right? And out of that, I would say 74% of credit cards are issued digitally. Uh, 71% of FDs which are open are digital. of the personal loans which are getting uh, disbursed are online, right? And this is because of the efforts that have gone in over the last uh, decade or so. In terms of the digital transformation today, we have over 250 services which are available on digital channels. Uh, The market share of of UPI is approximately about 17%. We have a 16% market share in mobile transactions. And also the mobile app rating is 4.6. So as I mentioned earlier, along with looking at the back end, we have also ensured that uh, you know, at the front end, there is a seamless customer experience. And uh, you know, today the customer's experience basis, what they get on an Amazon or a Flipkart is basically ever changing and the expectations are extremely high. So we have invested a lot in processes, technology, and even in terms of capabilities of our employees. So we have today over 800 people who are dedicated to this uh, digital agenda. Over uh, 60,000 employees, as I mentioned uh, earlier, are using uh, tablets. So earlier when we started off, we gave them tablets, but now most of it is on a BYOD basis. And we have an in-house development team of more than 150 people who are you know, creating uh, you know, our own technology systems. And we have close to about 150 plus you know, uh, uh, AI use cases which are deployed at scale. 
so all these things you know that we did over the last decade helped us ensure that you know uh, during this covid pandemic we are able to service all our customers and you know uh, deliver on their expectations and give them a, a seamless customer experience great so all your earlier preparedness has helped go through this or basically uh, this pandemic has been accelerated all the implementation which was already in the place i guess yes but having said that there is a, still a long way to go sure. so we are in the right direction and basically we have the infrastructure the people the technologies which are working at scale to help us achieve this agenda sure uh, may i come to uh, mr johri uh, with the same question here so uh, please speak about this digital transformation journey at icici bank challenges if you would like to mention anything about the benefits you might have derived and also the road map uh, for probably next 2 3 years which is there in the plan yeah so you know again you know we we take pride on you know taking the leadership uh, pole position on innovation and technology know how so so this is this is an ongoing continuous journey it it's not something that needed to get accelerated or decelerated uh, you know most of the assumptions that we had pretty much are standing through and the point is obviously to get on to the next stage so so the next stage actually you know looks at creating three separate sets of channels here there is an assisted channel uh, you know which will continue to to uh, to be around you know so people may not want to go to a branch uh, but they still may want to connect remotely to a contact center or to an rm you know over phone or over video calls uh, so so that is one bank you know the assisted bank there is another bank which is the digital bank now the digital bank obviously has the browser and the app uh, you know and the and the two both of them are powered by internet both of them can be you know done on any devices but symptomatically obviously the way an app is constructed and the way the browser is constructed you know gets on to the next level so we pretty much invented mobile banking when we started it off uh, the point is to just take it on to the next level uh, you know the intent is that between assisted and diy do it yourself Uh, the digital set you should be able to do everything that you did if you walked into a bank bank branch yeah? and by everything you know the point is not to just indulge in a knowledge update or a question sharing or actually just dropping a lead you should be instantly be able to fulfill anything that you did yeah? yeah so that's that's very very important yeah? uh, there is a third bank and again you know where we have done you know huge uh, you know innovations and actually again getting pole positions on which is the invisible bank uh, you know kind of strategy of what intel did with the pcs which is intel inside so you have icici inside a whole host of areas where you know customers now go to so whether it's zomato or swiggy or amazon or google pay you know a lot of what we do powers those things yeah so that is you know when customers indulge in those platforms they are actually banking with icici bank yeah so in all the three you know while individually each one is getting enriched on to the next level and it's very important to make sure all three are also congruent and consistent yeah uh, and let me explain as to why i'm not saying same yeah because obviously the kind of stuff that you can do on an app is very different from the kind of stuff you can do on the phone you know remotely uh, you know uh, and this is not to say that the uh, app is better than remote because you know the kind of empathy and the kind of human connect you can do this is of a different order right uh so the point is to make sure that the journey is consistent yeah so that the sequence in which data is asked and the sequence in which things are done are similar yeah and obviously with a phone you know from the diagonal of the phone or the operating system of the phone you can know a lot lot about the customer even before the customer actually announces who he is yeah a uh, ditto for a bank branch yeah in an invisible set obviously it's it's difficult you know in a embedded bank you know obviously the property is controlled by someone else uh but from the time that your systems kick in there your api sets kick in obviously you take control and make sure that things are easy effective and result in a good feeling yeah so that's that's the journey that we are taking and it's it's very important you know because the consistency between the three sets you know if one is looking at a digital transformation independent of the bank's transformation i think we are making a big mistake yeah you know because finally when we are making transformation it has to be from beginning till end right and if you change things at the core or you change things at an analytics or intelligence level you know there is a huge opportunity to take it back to the analog and the embedded bank as well yeah so i would not say that you know transformation necessarily means transformation at a digital channel level 
Yeah, you are actually doing it front to back. Yeah, right. I mean, getting a laptop or getting a pad to a field service agent is the easiest thing on planet Earth, right? But the important thing is, with that tablet, does he acquire superpowers of knowing everything, able to do everything? Able to do everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that is that is the crucial difference. Yeah. yeah, and that is what makes it effective. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's easy. You know, I call the guy, and he's not able to do much with a tablet, saying, "I will get back to you." You know, sure. then you lost it. Yeah, that's not a good experience. Sure. Yeah. You spoke about integrations. You spoke spoke about that consistency. I'll come to that point a little later. But let me first come to uh, Mr. Vatija Ji, and let me ask about how this data, this now since that all everything is digital, see a lot of real data is getting getting generated. How are you utilizing this uh, data for analytics purpose or even for uh, improving the uh, experience of the customer from a digital point of view? Yeah. Thank you, Anand. So uh, see. Um, You're right. So, given that you know the adoption of channels have increased many fold, and there are also multiple sources of data which is available today, and especially when we say sources of data, we are speaking about different types of data which is flowing to the you know to other cluster, where we are talking about maybe behavioral data, transaction data, uh, data about you know external data uh, that is flowing in. Terms of the customer profile, etc. So there are multiple sources of data which flows to the to, to to us now, given the change in the way in which the customer or the individuals are dealing with their own environments. So given that scenario, there is a possibility. There are multiple possibilities that actually have emerged. Uh, few of them I would want to highlight here, rather than. Uh, Going, going step by step into why everything. One of the first that we use this data for is to reduce decision fatigue. So where uh, I mean the, the way in which we look at you know recommendation of products into through the application through our application or through the digital channels or to empower the RMs or the uh, or the field staff branch staff. to actually uh, you know uh, recommend to a customer in terms of what he needs or what he may need per se is something that we are utilizing the data for so our our own uh, our our home grid recommendation engine has supported that well in terms of you know creating an experience for these for our customers to some extent to believe and build on They need and how they need. So typical, you know, propensity modeling. That's one part of it. Where we are talking about, you know, the buying experience or augmenting the buying experience, improving the buying. Experience. The second part of the the usage of data that we have, and that is something which is critical. Again, I I go back to my first point: is in terms of building trust. When I say building trust, is in terms, you know. Overall security uh, of transactions that that are happening through the platforms, and where we have you know pulled in a lot of information, uh, behavioral information of the customers, created uh, various types of you know models in terms of creating the layers or uh, invisible layers uh, to, for the customer to actually. Enjoy the experience the way it is, it is envisaged, but having said that, not intruding into the experience by in, increasing various sorts of authentication. So that is another piece. And in the same space, you know, we have actually, I mean, what 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 is referred to as invisible banking, we have been we we have one of the customers in that space as well, and we have actually been able to extract a lot of value by being present in various. Third-party environments, but being able to give the customer the same experience or better experiences in terms of you know how he authenticates transactions on the go. That's the second piece in terms of you know use of data. The third piece in terms of use of data is customer service. In terms of how the customer is utilizing their own uh, own experiences and how and what are they actually. Uh, Reverting to how they have liked our experiences, the experiences that have been provided to them. So typically, you know, listening to customers in various forms in different spaces, and understanding more and more about what the customer is asking or wanting to say to us in the varied ways 
or avenues that he has access to today is something where we have been leveraging data on. That has actually helped us build our application in such a way or our, our channels in such a way that they are more conducive to the customer experience rather than, you know, building, uh, building, building on, at the top end. I think, again, like, you know, creating something which is more optimal than other you know, just throwing it to the customer that this is what it is and you start managing and work. So the key differentiator here is actually what information is available for, uh, at, at, at the points of uh, data collection is what we have been like. So more or less, you know, uh, these are few of the experiences or uh, the three, few of them where we have been using data very, very effectively. Of course, there are other parts of the bank which, which, is, which we are definitely leveraging a lot of them. One more important point where we are leveraging data and which is very, very unorthodox and unconventional data sets and variables is in the space where we are actually products out of various behaviorals, uh, behavioral information that we have from the customers and actually prompting and producing a lot of use cases where, um, where you know, the customer can actually uh, which are available to him without having, you know, going through a lot of documentation and onboarding friction. So that is another space where we have leveraged a lot of data and created products across the same. And that is also uh, some place where we have leveraged a lot of invisible banking in, in terms of you know, being embedded in various customer cases to actually provide lines to customers to leverage various sorts of uh, customer offers that are available. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Mahmood, uh, would you like to uh, add your thoughts onto this one in terms of uh, utilizing the uh, captured data for improving the uh, customer digital experience? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would like to, you know, put in perspective. Uh, it works primarily in the territory of Jammu and Kashmir, but not in your presence. But our major customer base is in. In Kashmir, and uh, the key challenge uh, which we have faced is that over the years we have tried to deepen the uh, uh, transactions, uh, digital transactions, and the journey of customers. But we have been able to reach to a point. So now our strategy is to how to bring that uh, section of the customers who have not embarked on the digital journey. Put the transactional part to the data channel so that those customers who are not, who are still not embraced uh, technology. We as a bank have various shades of customers, so not necessarily uh, who are tech savvy or who embrace technology. Still, uh, who are still content with going to the, to the branch. There are a lot of rural branches, there are a lot of rural customers. The customers are, uh, who might not have access to internet also. So our uh, use of data is basically to focus on that uh, section of the customers who are still not embracing technology or why we have not been able to put them into the digital channels so that they can transact through digital channels. So that is one area where the uh, data uh, churning is uh, happening. Uh, one more thing is that we believe that uh, you know, once we have data and we have tons of data available in banks, uh, we have to do kind of marketing targeted and not just advertising um, uh, to the customers so that it, it appeals to everyone. So that's why we are, what we are trying to do is from our data, from our sources, we are trying to do focus digital marketing to those customers who are already on the digital journey and who we can expand our, uh, expand our uh, relationships or, you know, enhance the relationships. So that is one more idea, targeted marketing, where we are trying to, to focus on the data to, uh, you know, which is going to help us uh, in marketing. One more area where we are trying to use the technologies, uh, or trying to use the solution products to uh, get benefits of data is, we, we believe as, as part of our digital strategy is that it is not that what we have to give to the customer. That, that's our focus. No. It is what the customer wants from us. That's our focus. So from the data, from uh, data analytics and other tools, we are trying to see the data from the history and other things. We are trying to see what the customer requires so that we could be able to give him those uh, platforms or solutions or services wherein we can use those technologies. So, That's my services. Uh, 
that's so, uh, yeah. so focus services basically we're talking about absolutely thanks thanks mr mehru we are left with 10 minutes now let me come to mr srinivas so uh, i think this this is a common question for all of you so any key challenges you would like to speak about post covid uh, in the digital banking sector space Am I audible now? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I could only say that you know uh, the, the COVID pandemic has you know uh, ensured that uh, the dis- uh, digital transformation journeys for all banks has only been accelerated, right? right. Uh, because of the restrictions uh, that were put in place, you know, uh, with not many people walking into branches. So I would see that you know all the uh, the issues or the restrictions actually you know worked as an opportunity. for all the mm. banks to accelerate yeah. the transformational journey and uh, because of that you know while had it not happened possibly this would have taken a little more time but uh, for me personally you know uh, no, i would not see uh, the, the covid pandemic coming to us as a challenge but it seemed to us to be taken as an opportunity where we could accelerate a lot of the things that we wanted to do as a bank and execute them sure uh, so mr vadicha ji uh, any key challenges you'd like to discuss on digital banking post covid so i don't think there is any challenge and i i repeat the point earlier which is opportunity it is actually okay. uh, it is actually a fact that you know uh, that uh, adoption has gone through the roof just now and and we hadn't seen this kind of adoption earlier so while uh, it's an opportunity we have to see that you know the most important thing now with this kind of an adoption is availability so if i if we, if we if, since the the backends are getting stretched enough now and we we realize you know what is the what is the tenacity and what is the concurrency and how can we manage the entire uh, you know availability bit well so the infra has to manage itself well while that's not a challenge again and that's the requirement per se because you are running a digital bank you should be made you you should have to be available all the time so that's one the second piece like i mentioned again and that's been a thread throughout my conversation was the uh, security bit which is there which is which is something which 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 we see often now uh, uh, also with adoption going the, there are new set of vulnerabilities which are coming and some way or the other we see you know these fraudsters are always there uh, while they are not a one step ahead but you have to stay one step ahead, step ahead of them so that keeps us on our toes uh, very regularly and that's again another bit of opportunity to the scale up and that that has also helped us um, uh, fortify our applications in a very very different way wire them in a different way and also uh you know uh, layer them in a particular way where these are invisible layers but having uh, doing the job very well sure so this, that that's the second piece and the third opportunity that comes out of this entire thing is the scope of different types of product offerings which happen okay and there there is a lot of scope of innovation here trial here because you have information and data available in terms of behaviorals etc due to the adoption and usage you you have a lot of scope of giving a lot back to the customer itself from its from its own information so if you look at you know the way the entire merchant side of customers have improved and grown and built sure it's a lot of scope that that is being done there not only Wait. at the individual level but at the merchant level as well sure okay yeah uh i quickly come to mr mehboob uh, on this uh, couple of minutes if you can speak about on this topic in terms of uh, any key challenges i have heard about this as, a, as an opportunity of this uh, situation a- any key challenges from your end for on this post uh, pan uh, uh, yeah see the uh, post covid uh, maybe the world has seen a lockdown but in jnk per se you know of 2020 2019 there has been a virtual lockdown here since august 5 for a long time so the best yeah. raised to that uh, so the challenge of uh, you know our digital journey or digital strategy of was was transformed the time we we went through that uh, political turmoil phase and there was so we were already so our journey was uh, confounded by the problems of no internet and there was no uh, access uh, to, to to the branches 
So then what we did is our focus was primarily on doorstep banking. We tried to utilize that as much as possible in our contact centers. And once, uh, and uh, that is where our focus in India was. And once internet was restored in this part of the world, uh, again, the key challenges was how to have a balance between customer experience and the risk management. Because, you know, banking is a highly regulated uh, industry. And you have to strike a balance between the customer experience, customer journey, and the risk management, so the security aspect of it. So that was one uh, big uh, challenge. And then banks have legacy systems, and there are limitations of legacy also. There are some systems who would who, who, who not be available for API integrations, and then, then how do you go about those systems, or how do you bring them to the customers? So there were those challenges which were uh, primarily on uh, the, the transformation print. You know? Sure. Now the customer journey and, you know, starting and to add to it, the key challenge has been a cultural change. It is, maybe people might not, you know, they might agree, or they might not agree, but it's a cultural change. This is a transformation is definitely a change in culture within the banks and among the customers also. Yeah, they, want the also. Yeah. they want ease of business. As somebody, as someone from ICS, the bank, Mr. Jory has said, this is primary. FinTechs and big techs, why are they successful? They give you so much of ease. Do the doing things. It's just, it, it's, it's a child's play. The banking system is still, you know, they are, they are, they are shining on those, uh, uh, maybe, uh, tight and rigid, uh, solutions. So, the journey from moving from the rigid solutions to open solutions and giving the company key, that is a big challenge. Okay. Yeah. Let me quickly come to Mr. Jory. I think we are, uh, spending out of time. So, on the same, uh, I have heard opportunities, but some challenges for Mr. Mahabub in terms of this uh, post-COVID situation. From your end, Mr. Jory. Uh, see, I, I don't think that the situation per se resulted in a bigger challenge. Uh, you know, there was a continuous quest to keep improving. What has happened actually is an opportunity that, yeah. you know, the sudden uh, change in customer's perception, I mean, you know, that that we need to do this, you know, we can do this. Uh, and therefore, obviously, in terms of provisioning for the extra load, uh, you know, especially the peak load that comes on, you know, that changes. Uh, but again, I mean, you know, if you if you manage, you know, the entire infrastructure well, uh, you can pretty much cope with it. Uh, the point is to just forecast it and superimpose with what's actually happening in the world. So so that's, that's largely been it. What has also changed... Uh, you know, has been uh, this whole end-to-end -end monitoring. You need to actually figure out a problem much before it actually happens. And, you know, yeah, I'm just yeah. talking about surge loads, uh, you know, and again, so enough, uh, you know, and more tools that actually result in, you know, better incident management, problem management, root cause analysis, that kind of stuff has helped us, uh, helped us cope with the surge that has come on. And, you know, to some extent, I think the reset is permanent. I don't think we are going to go back to the old levels, even after the, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we have just uh, a minute left, and I think this was very interesting. I think different viewpoints, and and uh, great having you all on, on this discussion panel. Okay. Thank you so much once again, everyone. Yeah. Have a nice day ahead. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much.